This is my pocket. This is my hand. What do they have in common? This ultralight compact sketch kit fits in both. It weighs less than an orange and is the perfect size for some quick outdoor sketches. Let's take a look at what I've included. Over the last two years, I've totally fallen in love with these Stillman and Burn sketchbooks. This is the beta series, but I also have all the other versions in this size, which is the 3.5 by 5 inch size. I usually keep my paper towels tucked into one of the pages so I know I don't forget them. I really like the soft covers because they weigh less, and sometimes I fold them back on themselves when I'm sketching. This one is a cold press version and they come in all different kinds. I really like the bright white paper though because it helps the colors stay more vibrant. My utensils vary from session to session, but I pretty much always have a waterproof pen. The main ones I switch between are the Uniball Signo DX, which has a nice fine point and is very reliable. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a fine liner, either 0.5 or larger, so that I can get nice, thick, bold lines. But my favorite is the Sailor Feud Fountain Pen, which has a 55 degree bent angle nib. This is really fun to sketch with. You can get super, super fine lines or really thick, luscious lines. I also love how much line variety you can get with a fountain pen versus other pens. And this is my favorite ink because it pretty much dries instantly and it's totally waterproof. I also usually carry a mechanical pencil so I don't need a sharpener and I use blue lead because it's just my favorite. I have a small collection of travel brushes and my current favorites are the Escoda Altimo. I was also gifted some Rosemary & Co travel brushes, so my current favorite combination is the Escoda Number no. 10 and the Rosemary & Co Rigger. This combo is especially good for little details. But once in a while I want to travel ultra light and I only take one brush, and in that case I choose a water brush. Water brushes are not my favorite because it's a lot harder to control the amount of water in the hairs, and the hairs themselves are often very plasticky and stiff. But over the years I've tried a bunch of different kinds, and my two favorites are the Caran d'Ache, which are kind of a syringe style, and you press a little button to let the water flow through. I think these are the best for water control, but I also really like the Pentel water brushes because they have a high flow, so if I want to paint really loose and wet washes, I'll use the Pentel. Plus the Pentel are slightly more compact. And now for the palettes. Okay, so you all know I love the portable painters. This is the micro version, and it's pretty easy to set up. It has a self-contained water dish and a couple mixing trays. One is built into the lid, and you just flip open the other one. What I've done for my ultralight kit, so the kit that I take out when I have to have the absolute minimum supplies, is I remove the outer lid and tray, so I just have the inside area. But I take out a row of color and I have a contained water dish. And there's a couple reasons I do this. For one thing, when I'm using my tiny little sketchbook, the Portable Painter Micro, as small as it is, is a bit cumbersome in comparison. The whole thing is bigger than one page, and when I'm holding it with one hand or clipping it to my sketchbook, it just is a bit too much. And so when I use my modified version, it's just much easier and fits much nicer within the small space, <laughs> a little easier to manage. Going back to the water brush real quick, I want to show you how I use this little palette. Because one thing I always struggle with <laughs> with water brushes is water control. With the Caran d'Ache, as I said, you just press a little button and that allows the water to flow through. This allows you to let the hairs more or less dry out if you need them to, which is good for dry brush textures. But otherwise, you just squeeze a little bit, touch it into the pigment, and then after I use a color, I usually rinse it out in the water dish so that I avoid cross-contaminating the colors. That tends to happen anyway, so when I get home, I typically do a little clean session. But overall, I definitely prefer the travel brushes because they just feel much more natural to me when I'm painting. I've also added a little metal clip to the back using some 3M Velcro strips. These are really easy to remove or add or change out, and they're really strong. And this does two things. It allows me to hook it onto my finger while I'm painting so I have a really stable palette, or I can clip it onto the sketchbook itself and it's hands-free. The longer my hikes become, the more I realize the consequences of carrying heavy equipment. 
Plus, a lot of times I don't allow myself a lot of time to paint. I have to capture something in 10 or 15 minutes before I move on and continue my mileage. So a setup like this is really conducive to quick sketches. In terms of materials, the choices are pretty much made for you, which I think makes the process easier and stress-free in the moment. I've included a link in the description to a blog post which includes all of the materials and weights and everything that you might need if you want to make this kit yourself. But of course I encourage you to experiment and customize it to your own needs. That's one thing I love about watching these kind of gear videos is seeing how everyone customizes things. Alright, we're keeping this one short today. If you'd like to see a video of me actually using this kit out on location, let me know in the comments. Or if you have any ideas or want to share what your kit is like, let me know. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.